Uh, hi guys, it's Max. It's the 23rd of May 2010. Uh, this is sort of a part two of my uh, weekend video review. I just remember that in the last video I posted, uh, I completely forgot to, to include some very important Fibonacci uh, sort of projection levels. Uh, basically, uh, if you watched my last video, I'm just slowly getting back into the routine of making these videos again after a sort of prolonged period of study leave. Um, and <laughs> clearly I'm not fully back into my routine because I forgot to add a very important thing and that is where the entire uh, five wave decline which I am arguing is a wave C uh, may terminate. Now why is this crucial? Because we're one to look for for example a buying opportunity which I will probably be considering. Uh, you want to look at an area where potentially uh, you, you don't want to preempt uh, the sort of the, the termination of a five wave move but you want to look for an area where there might be key support so you are expecting the bounce I'm talking about and the way you do it is through Fibonacci relationships. Now you've seen me often uh, in the past talk about Fibonacci relationships in corrective waves between waves A, B and C. Uh, in, in impulsive waves, i.e. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the only sort of real kind of Fibonacci relationships that I found to really work best uh, is retracements. So for example, uh, the retracement waves uh, 2 and 4 should have some sort of Fibonacci relationship with the preceding impulsive waves, i.e. 1 and three. Uh, in terms of corrective waves, I find that waves B are expected to have a retracement relationship with wave A and wave C is expected to have a sort of, uh, not a projection necessarily, but a length relationship to wave A. So wave C should either be sort of the length of wave A, uh, one for one, or uh, the length of wave A, give or take, uh, some Fibonacci differences. So 161.8% the length of wave 1 or 61.2% the length of wave, uh, sorry not wave 1, wave A. So there's a, should be an, uh, a, a relationship between wave A and wave C. Uh, in, in impulsive waves uh, Fibonacci projections are a bit hit and miss but I usually sort of, I can put them on uh, here and there to give me, uh, you know, see where they may cluster for significance. Uh, so just to, just to show you quickly what I'm, what I'm talking about, here's my wave A, this is the wave B, this is the wave C. Clearly wave B has overtaken uh, the length of wave A, thus no sort of retracement Fibonacci relationship can be established between these two waves. However, if we are, if I am correct in arguing that this is a wave C, uh, and this is a wave A, uh, there should be a Fibonacci relationship between this decline and this decline. And uh, if I'm correct, and I do believe I am, uh, we will look to establish that relationship. So what we do is you pull out your Fibonacci retracement uh, tool and take it to the span of wave A. As you can see, I've done that here. In my case, my uh, charting package has an automatic projection level. As you can see, there it is, below the 100. Uh, and what you want to do is you want to move the, the start of this uh, of the length of wave A here with the pr projection. You want to move the start, i.e. 0%, to the start of wave C. And if we do that, you can see that we get uh, roughly uh, the kind of a projection of wave C equaling 161.8% the length of wave A coming to around uh, 49.18 as a sort of point of, of important support to consider for the termination of this final thrust for the wave C. Uh, one more thing to consider, seeing as the wave C has not yet completed its wave 5, uh, one thing we can look for is a projection of uh, the, s the interior waves of wave 5. And the way we're going to do that is by looking at a Fibonacci projection uh, of uh, wave 1 of wave 5 and seeing where those projection levels go and if there's any overlaps or significance. So if you, what you do is you, took, you look at the Fibonacci uh, retracements of this wave 1. Uh, you can see here that, if I zoom in quickly, um, you can see that wave 2 uh, retraced 50% of wave 1 almost perfectly. You can see that 161.8% didn't do a did absolutely nothing uh, in terms of a uh, level of significance. It shot right through it. However, if you look at uh, the projection of this uh, wave 1 of the final wave 5, uh, it's projecting the end of the wave 5. Uh, the 261.8% the projection is 
4903. And you can see that it's clustering within 15 pips of our sort of major uh, A to C relationship. We have an inter, uh, sort of uh, an internal projection of wave 5 clustering in a similar area. Therefore, uh, yours truly is going to put his neck on the line a little bit and say that I am expecting this entire uh, decline on the FTSE from 58, 50 or so, to find uh, a lot of key support between the levels of 4900 and 4920. Uh, I think it's 20 point gap, it's pretty tight, uh, so I expect uh, this entire 5 wave move down to terminate eventually within that region and then look for a massive bounce. But only time will tell and we'll see how the markets go. Okay guys, uh, thank you very much. That's it. That's the conclusion in a nutshell. Again, apologies for forgetting to, to add this to the previous video. Uh, comments are of course welcome. I'll link the two videos so you can uh, see exactly what I'm talking about and, and sort of put the picture together and hopefully you'll understand exactly what I'm trying to get at. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, best of luck uh, with next week. Uh, hopefully we'll see some interesting action and we'll, I'll probably comment uh, on the next weekend or maybe even Thursday. If I'm lucky enough, I might get another video out there. Alright, all the best. Thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.